The Ministry of Defence conducted secret germ warfare tests on the British public between 1940 and 1993. In this shocking revelation, we'll have a look at some of the incidents that occurred and what happened to the people that were exposed. The fluorescent particle trials. From 1955 and 1963, multiple sorties were flown, dropping a chemical on millions of the British population. We'll go into each of these in more detail after this summation. The large area coverage trials between 61 and 68, well over a million people were exposed along the coasts to strange and dangerous bacteria. The DICE trials from 71 to 75, the UK and the US collaborated in dropping massive quantities of chemicals on the British public. The sabotage trials between 52 and 64, government buildings, the underground, all these areas were targeted with the release of bacteria to see how far it would spread should a, the spider web experiments from 63 to 73. Spider webs were coated with germs and released in boxes across the English countryside. See who would be affected and how long they would last. And then the biggie, live anthrax spread on a Scottish island, rendering it completely uninhabitable and off limits on possible pain of death. Live bubonic plague was also released and then they went somewhere else. Families that were affected and concerned over these releases of, t of potentially toxic chemicals have long blamed them for strange birth defects. And we'll look into that. The fluorescent particle trials. Between 55 and 63, government scientists and pilots working with the MOD flew multiple sorties high above the civilian population from the northeast along the south coast in Cornwall dropping vast quantities of what they thought was a fairly innocuous fluorescent chemical in order to judge the spread of a potential chemical or biological attack from a foreign power. We mean the Soviet Union, because this was the Cold War. Another episode involved a truck dispersing chemicals into the air as it drove along a road in from Somerset. Unbeknownst to the people, the orchestrators of this used the chemical zinc cadmium sulfide, which in World War II was classified as a chemical warfare agent, and it's now known to be a carcinogen and is associated with lung cancer. Why did the government think this was an appropriate chemical to use? It's far from safe and non-toxic, and even then, it was known to be a problematic chemical. During the large area coverage trials between 50, 61 and 68, the Navy ship the Ice Whale off the coast of Dorset dispersed anthrax mimicking bacteria, including E. coli and the Bacillus globuli. And this exposed over a million people to these bacteria, mainly in Dorset, but possibly also in France. From 71 to 75, the DICE trials sprayed anthrax mimicking bacteria, as well as massive quantities of phenol, which is a known irritant and a corrosive, affecting the, the eyes, the mucous membranes, and the upper respiratory tract. This again was spread over South Dorset, and this involved the cooperation of the US. Both UK and US Air Forces were dumping these chemicals in the affected area. The London Underground was attacked. The simulated attack trial with the London Underground being the target for a release of bacteria around the Tooting Broadway station, which then spread a further 10 miles in all directions across London. The unsuspecting travellers on the tube were exposed to bacteria that could cause eye infections and food poisoning. Some people may even have succumbed. The same bacteria were released in government buildings and in tunnels below government buildings to see if an attack there would have any effect on the people working above. The government workers were never told what was going on. The spider web trials. So bacteria were attached to spider webs <laughs> and then put in boxes 
and distributed across the English countryside. And this happened between 1964 and 1973. In order to find out how long these germs would exist and how many people would actually be infected. Now that the truth has finally been revealed, despite successive governments keeping the information classified for many years, those in the most affected areas have drawn parallels to many birth defects and strange occurrences that affected clusters of people, or so they say, in the area that was affected by the chemicals. The local health authority have said there are no such clusters, but the people maintain that these things were unnaturally frequent in the areas that were subject to these trials. Live anthrax was used in Grunewald Island just off, and when I say just off, you literally could swim across to it. Island, or just off the west coast of Scotland. The island was only inhabited by sheep at the time, and they met a particularly gruesome and sticky end, as anthrax is not a nice death. Anthrax outbreaks also occurred on the mainland, probably due to the prevailing westerly, which would blow any spores that were airborne across the short space of water onto the mainland. The island was off limits and illegal to land on until the late 90s. A massive uh, cleanup operation involving hundreds of gallons of formaldehyde was spread all over the island to try and kill the anthrax spores and ensure that it was safe. Nowadays, people do visit the island. It's not a tourist attraction though. It's mainly local fishermen or the odd history hunter. But I don't think I'd be going grubbing about in the soil of Anthrax Island. I think there's still potential there as anthrax spores are known to exist for hundreds of years in a viable condition. And then, and a, a, a UK military ship was spreading live bubonic plague bacteria from its from <laughs> from itself off the coast of Lewis. Lewis is an island in the Outer Hebrides with a population of 11,000 11, people. Now, they were allegedly spreading it in a way that the wind would, the prevailing wind would take it away from the island. However, a local fishing boat sailed right through the cloud of bacteria unbeknownst to them, but known to the authorities. What did the authorities do? Nothing. They put a watch on Lewis to see if there was going to be an outbreak, but no proactive measures were taken to make sure that nobody was injured. Luckily, it all appeared to be fine. But maybe they thought at this point, maybe we need to stop doing this kind of thing in the British Isles. And yeah, they thought, okay, let's do it in some of our foreign Commonwealth countries. So where did they think was an appropriate place to go and test chemical and biological warfare? You guessed, the Bahamas. So yeah, they took their tests out to the Bahamas. So the next time you go on a Caribbean holiday, just remember, just remember what they've been doing out there and how they told nobody about it. Porton Down was the centre for this, the top secret government research laboratory that's existed in some form since the early 20s, I believe. It's still controlled by the government and the Ministry of Defence. It holds some of the deadliest toxins and nerve agents known to man, including some that were exclusively manufactured by the Soviet Union. When pressed to disclose, if they continued to test, they simply say, it's not our policy to discuss ongoing research. There you go. If you like this, please consider liking, sharing and subscribing. And as always, stay informed and protect yourself.